Well, we set up yet another scrape tree on the property and we, uh, I use these because, you know, I encourage you to have a mock scrape at every stand location. It really gives the attention for deer to focus on this instead of a camera nearby or us up in a tree stand. This is a really cool setup that we expect to use early to mid season. When they're hitting this corn the end of November, December, then we can't hunt in this corn. We hunt from a redneck back there, which is still great, but we have a ladder stand right in that four trunked oak behind me. We actually access through the corn, blow our scent into the corn. So for all of the latter half of September, and most of October, early November, until they're hitting the corn, we can use that access, hidden access behind the corn, get in that ladder stand, and we can have a great hunt. The problem is we're not in the woods, so we don't have a spot for a mock scrape. And to me, they're that important. I want that deer focusing right here. I want that buck focusing on this and not at us in a tree. And we'll probably get away with putting a camera right over here on a post. I'll put it up into the corn. I'll try to hide it so the profile's hidden and it'll be off to the side. But again, they're gonna be focusing on this. We're gonna rough this up. I'll make a giant scrape right here. But what's really cool about these scrapes is that whether it's in the woods or out here, they're really not focusing on the ground right here. That's sometimes a calling card when there's fresh dirt torn up. But we find, we watch these 365 days a year and we've been doing so for many, many years and lots of different scrapes. What we find is, uh, out of 365 days a year, they're probably only hitting the actual and actually scraping the ground 20 days a year, 15 days a year, right in the heart of the rut, and that's about it. In fact, a lot of times they're not even very aggressive with this right here. They're simply rubbing their preorbital gland scent from their nose and eyes on that and leaving their scent. It's pretty cool. We notice that. We even have bucks that go up to it. They actually, after they leave their scent, they move their head and go around it because it's almost like something sacred right here. So we don't want to add any scent to this. That's a really big uh, mistake that a lot of people make because you could have dozens of deer that have left their scent, including fawns. That's why we have this at waist high. We want fawns to participate in leaves, leaving their scent. We want does, immature bucks, immature bucks. Me and mature being relative to your area. The bottom line is we want the oldest bucks in the neighborhood to leave their scent here and the youngest deer in the neighborhood to leave their scents, and we find all sexes do. And it's really interesting when you watch this. You know, we're putting this at waist high. Traditional licking branch would come horizontally out from a tree, and they're more about chest high. That buck likes that rigidity to push his head into, and a lot of times break with his antlers when they're a little bit more aggressive. What we find with this is we want something that's three quarter inch to one inch in diameter. So there's a heft enough so they can actually rub their scent and their preorbital gland scent on there and leave there. Again, that calling card for all those deer. We find that a buck will be across the field. He'll eye this up and come right over and leave a scent. Now you can see we have this free swinging right here. I don't want this stiff because if it's stiff, for one, this is a red cedar that we just cut down. We used a post hole digger, put it in the ground, Actually, Dylan used a post hole digger. Thank you, Dylan. <laughs> Appreciate it, but uh, still recovering from my appendix, so I'm gonna milk this for all it's worth. But, <laughs> but anyways, appreciate it, Dylan. We have this, we set this in here, and I don't want there a lot of rigidity on this overhanging branch or the vertical vine right here. Now you can use an oak branch, aspen, whatever deer like to rub in your area. Uh, we find that they really scrape under these vines around here. That's some of the most perennial licking branches that I see anywhere. But I want this to be free swinging so it's not attached. And so a buck, when he is aggressive, doesn't have a tendency to break this. It can just swing freely back and forth. We'll be right back to today's video, but guys, thank you so much. We launched our seed company about three weeks ago and the success has been overwhelming. We've currently had orders from 36 states. We planted our food plot seed because Dylan and I wanted to get one plot in here quick. We're planting the rest August 12th and 13th. But we, it's so awesome to look down and see our little tiny brassica plants coming in on this side. We have buckwheat, tillage radish, peas on the other side. This has been a huge success for us, but most of all, guys, thank you so much. I know the seed is really high priced this year. We will drastically reduce that for next year. I urge you to check it out on our site. We have the Big Boost Brassica, our Fall Power Greens. We have limited supplies. We appreciate your business. Thank you so much for watching. Now back to the video.
I also want a little weight to this. That's why the three quarter inch comes in because I don't want it tripping a camera back and forth. We use high, qual we use high quality access trail cameras. We don't get a lot of false triggers, but I wanna make sure of that by making sure that I anchor this down with some kind of weight. And I'll probably come in here and I'll actually cut the top of this off a little bit. I'll probably cut this branch right here, this one, because again, I don't want this catching wind and blowing back and forth, moving this prematurely in front of the camera. Something interesting to note, red cedar, deer rub these. They like to rub red cedar trees. We'll find that 20 times, 40 times, 50 times to one, they go hit the scrape instead of leaving a rub here. A lot of times on these scrape trees, you'll see a rub on the actual tree itself but the vast majority of the time they're ignoring this because in the wild, bucks don't typically make rubs or hit rubs, a certain specific rub, more than one, two, three times at most during the entire season. They're just hitting it and then moving on. So really placing a priority on that right there. And that's why we really won't even have some shots if they're hitting the rub because this will be their priority to them. We see that over and over again. Now we've cemented these in in the past and we forgot to get some cement this time so dylan put it in extra deep i would say it's probably about 30 inches down there dylan yes. would be a, a good depth and you can see it's pretty solid we've packed in this clay this hard you know pretty decent soil around it so it's pretty firm and then we have a secondary branch if you're going to do something like this we have a secondary branch in case this one breaks right here so we could actually add a scrape on this one right here the cool thing about red cedar you find they can last many years. We have other red cedar we can tap into if we need to, but we expect this licking branch to add to in this entire red cedar post scrape tree to really last five to seven years or longer. It should last a very long time. Cedar posts have been known to, to survive for many, many years, decades. So we take advantage of that by creating these red cedar trees. And I believe a hardwood like an oak would do really well. Uh, maybe even a hemlock, something that firms up really hard to hang the licking branch. But again, it's all about this vertical vine and the licking branch. And it's all about setting our shot up right there. I actually set this up, Dylan and I paced it off. This leaf on the ground right here, we figured it was about 26, 26 and a half yards. And so I said, well, let's move it a couple yards closer to the tree. That puts it right in that sweet spot. And that's where I like those scrapes is a lot of people have a 20 yard pin, 30 yard pin. And what's really nice is if you're dialed in at 20 and you have a 20 yard pin or you forget to move your sight if it's a single pin, then this right here, we're accounting for a little bit of a, of a rise in arrow on a short angled shot like this. So this is right at 24 yards, 22 yards, right around there. We can aim almost center long, just on top of the heart. And we're giving ourselves that really nice sweet spot for a shot. And if they happen to come over and, and make a rub there, then we're still right within that really easy shot window. And watch, I'll go out and blow it this year. Dylan said he can't wait to sit in the stand with me, so we'll see what happens. But you can bet we'll monitor this. We expect good things. We've also accounted for if we hide this camera back in the edge of the corn here, this is straight north going this way. So we're not gonna get any sun triggers by having to put the camera in a location where we're facing the sun. The rising sun is right over here. South is behind Dylan and the camera right here. But pretty easy fix to not having a, uh, a tree or a couple trees to hang a vertical vine off of. You know how much I rely on these for all of our trail cam footage. We use a lot of B-roll. Almost every video we have B-roll of some kind of a buck coming in and hitting a scrape. And that's because we've been using this for years. This isn't a product I sell. Literally, we're using a piece of parachute cord. You can tell on this, I probably used about a foot of parachute cord. I mean, literally in this case right here, the expense we have is the parachute cord. And I don't even know if we'd have five to 10 cents of parachute cord in this entire, uh, entire ordeal. And again, we're opening this up just for that initial, that initial look by deer. But well, we noticed that they're just not even making a scrape 345 days a year out of 365. They really don't. And they continue to hit this year round. So we always bring those to you. Hope this makes sense. It's a very effective, easy setup. I see a lot of people using fake rubs, things like that. But this is always the priority. And what's interesting, we use water holes. I shot two bucks, my two bucks, one in Wisconsin, one in Minnesota with a bow last year. They were over water holes. And what's interesting, when we have a vertical scrape, or vertical vine hanging next to them, 
They will hit the water as a priority, especially during the rut, but the majority of the year, they're ignoring the water in favor of these vertical vines or vertical branches. And that's just how important they are, even as a priority over a water hole, let alone a fake rub or something. I don't even bother putting those in because it's not something they hit regularly. Now, if there was only cedar post right out in the middle of the food plot, I'm sure it'd get picked on a lot of attention, but we can bring deer. You can go to the back back there. It's about 80 to 90 yards to the back of this plot. I expect deer, in, in this case right here, to come all the way over here, hit this. We have a water hole right down in the woods here. That's a natural progression for them to come out of the bedding area here, hit the mock scrape, go over the water hole, and then they go out to the ag fields after dark. And they make that same pattern coming in in the morning, coming off the ag fields. We can slip into this corner right here being undetected. And so we might even take some early season morning hunts depending on what we're seeing on the camera here. So great setup, very cheap to create, easy. Don't bother using any scent highly effective a lot of fun to put in and we usually hit deer hitting it we have deer hitting this within one or two days after creating it and you can bet we'll bring that to you in the future so try these they're a lot of fun and very rewarding and uh hope you can try them out this year you have the right spot for it again we wouldn't be hunting in this big food plot if we couldn't hide behind this layer of corn coming in it's about 80 yards back to the edge there so we'll bring it to you this fall and we'll bring some b-roll if nothing else and I uh, hope you can do the same because it's a lot of fun. Enjoy, enjoy going in the hunting season. We're getting really close and these are some of the fun things we like to do leading up to the season, but they're not only fun, they're important. Make it a priority on your land and you'll enjoy it really for this fall and for decades to come. Folks, I wanna make sure you check out my web class video series, whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.